we go. Metropolis, the map, the spawn positions, 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. The players, Liquid Red, the blue Zerg up at the top of the map and down on the bottom half. The red Protoss, Mouse Hasu. Hasu trailing 0-1 to Rhett, and this is my favorite map Okay. To play against Protoss. <laughs> Why don't you tell me your strategies on this map, because I know it's actually really freaking good. Okay, so uh, Protoss players have long said that they don't enjoy playing against Mutalisks, because Muta is uh, a very fast, mobile, harassment-based strategy that almost inevitably forces you to base race, right? Uh, you're going to turtle up and turtle up and turtle up and defend and defend and defend, but eventually you're going to say, all right, I'm going to go, and at that moment Zerg's going to counterattack and crush your base, and it just comes down to who can kill who faster. Uh, on this map, if you throw in a Nidus Worm with that kind of mutilisk play, you can just take the islands, and when you force the base race, Protoss can't actually get to these islands if he doesn't have, you know, a mothership or war prisms or things of that nature. So I like to play base race Muta with Nidus to the islands, on this map, and I think it is very strong, very abusive, and I think the only thing that it's not that good against are Stargate openings. Interesting. And I've seen you kill a lot of nerds on this map with that build. I was um, so sad so... when they took it out of the ladder pool. <laughs> I, like, I got so much rage when I played against that. Uh, I'm sorry, better, but uh, your 100% win rate with that is no longer. Uh, interesting <laughs> build that we have coming out from Hasuwabs. Now, normally this is a map of like two base immortal pressure, just because yep. the rush distances are so long that you don't have to worry about Zerg and Roach pressure, it's against the metagame. So you're just saying, okay, I'm going to tech directly up to robotics facility and do kind of what we saw in Daybreak, um, but you know, just be a lot more assertive with it, I should say, not go into Colossus. Oh, uh, great. Instead, Micro. we have a gateway gateway opening for Hasuobs as he is uh, blocking off the expansions from going down. With some really good micro in the natural there as Rhett was just dancing around that uh, that probe, doing as much damage as he could. I love the opening that Hasu is showing us, Andre. Uh, he's going to go one gate expand, I presume, uh, and then transition into, I think, a two base push, or a gateway push. And the timings are going to be so crazy. If Rhett takes a fast third base, it's going to be very, very difficult for him to to hold that base because Warpia is going to be so much faster. But Rhett is already um, doing something that I think is very intelligent. He's making six Zerglings and sending them right across the map. And six Lings are very difficult to defend with just a single Zealot, especially when they can just chew away at your Cyber Core or your Gateway, forcing you to come out and engage them. Yeah, it might actually force Hasselhoff to put down like a Gateway or something over there so the Zerglings don't don't go and squeeze through. I don't know if that Zealot is going to block the position Man, completely. Man, this is really awkward placement, because Hasu can't put yeah. anything in front of the Cyber Core. Oh, wouldn't you know it? Wow. He actually blocks that completely. I'm really impressed. Uh, I thought that was a huge space, but yeah, you're absolutely right. One gate expansion goes down better. And, of course, his opponent is going to go for the regular Stefano style, where you get three very quick hatcheries. And I am really eager to see exactly how Hasu follows this up. Um, I think one of the best things that he could do would be like a six gate off of maybe 32 probes, which is like old school six gate. That's how uh, Noni did it the first time against Idra whenever the, 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 the era of the six gate first began. Um, I think that would be pretty viable in a situation like this where Rest's going to want to drone for a long period of time, but he doesn't have that luxury when warp gate is so much faster. Yeah, so we'll see how these players actually go about it. Um, I do want to mention one really quick thing. Um, I, I want to talk about Forge Fast Expansion against this, this gateway expansion, because I feel like the Forge Fast Expansion gets you everything that House Wobs has done already, but without the sentries. And yes, the sentries are really good for later on, but I feel don't you feel like... Uh, no, you, know, you don't do it for what you get. You do it for the timing. You do it for the faster warp gate. Exactly, uh, exactly. And oh, if, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. I mean, Warp Gate's going to be done, Andre. It's, I mean, it's how, how many seconds away is it? It's 30 seconds away, and it's six minutes into the game. Uh, so Hasu, can, he can leave his base right now and start to put on just three gate pressure if he wants. And uh, and Red is sitting on just 37 drones, right? You don't, The last game we saw where Hasu went for a big two-base all-in, Red had 70 drones when that came. Yeah. Red is Red. I, I think, uh, well... It's a little bit difficult, this position, because also think last game, I mean, the plus one was shown that it wasn't being made for so long. So you have a position where, obviously, Protoss 
Uh, doesn't have any four gate timing, so Rhett was able to tech up to that really, really fast. Um, or not tech up, but get 70 drones super, super fast. That gave him the advantage in that early game stage. So, uh, I, I don't know. I, I felt like game one was a little bit weird. Game two, now we move into another very weird build that I'm just not used to seeing in PvZ. And I would actually say that uh, it's going to be hard to get stuff done even here because the initial push across the map just to get space, that is going to be very susceptible mm -hmm. to, I think, a lot of zergling pressure. One thing that I'm a little bit uh, uh, not totally cool and happy about is the fact that Hasu's not really doing anything with this faster warp gate. I mean, he got the warp gate, but he's still turtled up. He's still back in his base, and his lings are going to threaten to run past, but sentries will kill him. Uh, yeah. Red sacrificed two overlords trying to figure out what's coming, and he could not see anything. He has no idea that Hasu's getting blink. Uh, so maybe, yep, there we go. Four more gates going to go down. It's going to be six gate blink stalkers. Uh, this is still a really good, strong follow up. But, um,. I don't I like know that it's actually any faster this way. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think it actually is. I think it's a lot less efficient because your probe saturation is a lot later. So that being said, I mean, you don't get your four gas nearly as quickly, and that affects your stalker count. Um, but to, to what you were saying, you know, if you have that warp gate out super fast, go into the middle map and uh, really shark around. That's something that I think a lot of these players know about, but I think Haswells might be a little bit scared for potential, you know, circling run buys or even a huge circling surrounding your army. But I think that's one of the main things that you always have to do. Force your opponent to get a lot of units out and make it look like it's a push so they play a little bit more inefficiently. Ray is going to go ahead and reveal that he's made a lot of Zerglings and he's droning up once a, once again behind it. Uh, so Infestation Pit going down, Roach Speed, plus one, lots of Roaches. Red's gearing up for the push that Hasu's sending his way. And... Uh, I mean, the, the more the more time Hasu takes with this, the less effective I feel like it's going to be. Yeah, and really, I mean, you're at 10 minutes. Normally, you do have a pre-12 minute timing to actually punish your opponent, but uh, at this point, I, I just feel like, you know, Rhett just has a, a firm understanding of what his opponent is doing. He's had so many little indicators to know exactly how it's happened. And here we go, finally, Hasu, I was pushing out here. Uh, I just, I'm, I, I'm finding it so difficult for Hasuops to get a lot of stuff done. Yes, he needs great Blink Stalker Micro, but uh, is that really, you know, capable at this point in time? Uh, full wall off, and uh, Rhett's going to threaten the counter, but uh, nothing really doing there. Hasu going to just sit on this Zelnaga Tower, going to intercept a couple of these Zerglings, and continue to push forward. Rhett right now is on pure Roach Ling, but he's getting Pathogen Glands. He's got 63 Durons, so a strong economy, and Infestors are one of the easiest ways to shut down Blink Stalkers in the book. Oh yes, and look at that, just trying to pick up any of these Stalkers from behind. Zergens will get a couple of them. Force Shields go up, and here's a problem, Liquid Red doesn't actually blow out the back Destructive Debris to actually give him the space, but here we go, big surround! Roach is going to come up from in the front, and my god, he didn't get the Force Shields down in time. He's going to burn every single one of them. Red can just easily back up from here does not have to keep engaging. Wait for another round of enforcements, but uh, it might just be enough here. That was an okay uh, volley of force was getting, making the little donut there, but Rest just got so many units in Hasu's push. Yeah. Uh, it just doesn't look like he's got that much. Roaches, uh, we've got stalkers falling with every volley from these roaches. Hasu trying to micro as well as he can, but Rest supply is uh, skyrocketing while Hasu's is plummeting in the, in the swing is a massive one and red is going to easily deal with this and gg, GG is called